When God showed Daniel a vision, two visions actually, of the four great kingdoms of the earth, what were they? Babylon, the Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. Wow. Okay. You got that on your piece of paper. The Babylonians were great timekeepers. They came up with a 60 minute hour, 60 second minute number of days in the year, etc., etc. Great stargazers. Uh, the Persians came up with the idea that the law was supreme, that even the emperor had to obey the law. And they, they didn't have emperors. They had god men, Persian uh, kings. The, the Greeks had the arts and philosophy. All of those things are called geniuses of those empires, those kingdoms. By genius, I don't mean smart. I mean there's a spirit behind each one of those kingdoms. There's a spirit behind the United States. There's a spirit behind every country. The Bible talks about that. God showed Daniel what the Babylon, what the when He showed him that image of the golden head and the silver arms and chest and the bronze midsection and the iron legs and at the end, end with the iron and, and clay, he told him that the, brought, the gold head was Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon. The chest and arms were the Medo-Persian Empire, became the Persian Empire. The middle section was the Greeks. Daniel knew that, but Daniel died never having been told what the last one was. We know that it was Rome. <clears throat> it was Rome conquered Greece. And you see that you have a map of how big the Roman Empire got. At its height. That's a long way ahead of the story right now. But it cut you all around the Mediterranean Sea. And they called that sea Nostra, what's the word? Nostra Mara. Mara, no, Mara Nostra, which means our sea. Just to get it straight to start with, everybody knows it's our seat. So, the, great, the uh, Romans had a genius that was different from the timekeeping and the law, legal system, and the arts and the philosophy. Their, their demon, their spirit that was over that empire in general was one for governing. And they knew it. They weren't envious of the Greeks. They weren't they didn't mind all the other empires and kingdoms having whatever geniuses they had as long as they controlled them. And they knew how to do it. That's what this poem is about. When, when, when uh, Rome had its first emperor, there was a need for an empire's Bible. The Greeks had their Bibles called the Iliad and the Odyssey, these great mythological epics written by Homer, talking about the gods and men and how things develop in the Trojan War and then Odysseus' trial home. That became the Bible, that was the basis of all education in the Greek world, the Iliad and the Odyssey. All educated people could quote a lot from both of them. Well, Rome didn't have one, so Virgil wrote one. This mythological story of the beginnings of Rome that they said was true. To show that Caesar Augustus, the first emperor, who was emperor when Jesus was born, had divine blood in his veins. To show his origins went all the way back to, I think it was Venus. I can't remember if it was Venus or Athena, one of them. Anyway, to show that he had divine blood, he was superior to ordinary people. This uh, poem right here, near the end of that Roman Bible called the Aeneid, talks about Rome's genius. First of all, it talks about the Greeks' genius for the arts. Let others better mold the running mass of metals and inform the breathing brass 
make grass look like it's so alive it's breathing and soften into flesh a marble face. Let the Greeks do that. That's fine with us. And you know why they did that? If you see the Egyptian gods, how weird they look, and other kingdoms gods, the Greeks came up with the idea that the gods were not the center of everything humans were. And so it was important for them to get every shape perfect. That's why you see so, so perfectly shaped uh, statues started in Greece. And Rome said, that's fine. They're great at that, okay? And better plead at the bar, that's lawyer talk. Let them have the better legal system. <clears throat> or describe the skies and when the stars descend and when they rise, that's timekeeping, that's Babylon. So it refers to Babylon, Persia, and the Greeks in reverse order. But as long as Rome took it all in and ruled over everybody, it was okay with them. But Rome, tis thine alone with awful sway to rule mankind and make the world obey. Disposing peace and war, thy own majestic way to tame the proud, the fettered slave to free. That's an odd line because Rome had millions of slaves. But these are imperial arts, conquering arts, ruling arts and worthy of thee. So, that's what we're talking about. This Rome that knew how to rule. Part of its ability to stay in power was its willingness to change when it found a better way to control people. Rome started out according to what? What? So the Aeneid is the Empire's Bible? Well, that's what I call it. Okay. I mean, there, there are references to the Iliad and the Odyssey being the Greek Bible because it's yeah. so basic and it's so full of religion as the Aeneid is. So I, it's called the Bible in some places and I call the Iliad that. That's, for the, that's why I wrote it. It was very important. All educated people could afterward quote the Iliad and the Odyssey and the Aeneid. It was right, ranked right up there with them. Some kind of story. And uh, so according to Roman mythology in the year 753, 753 years before Jesus is born basically, um, a guy named Romulus marked out the city of Rome. Romulus had a, had a twin brother, but he killed him. They got into a fight over marking out the city and who would be the one to choose it. And, one of those stories. But Romulus and Remus, his twin brother, were rescued by a wolf. A she-wolf who decided not to eat those babies but to take them in and nurse them as their own. This is one of the, one of the emblems of the city of Rome to this day. You can see it carved in a lot of the buildings up high. This and one other thing. But that's, a, that's probably the most famous statue associated with Rome, other than maybe Augustus Caesar's statue. Now, Rome was ruled by kings about 250 years, starting from 753. If you start then, about 250 years, something like that. <coughs> Until they had such a rotten king, they kicked the bum out, threw him out. And one of the guys that, that was chief among those kicking him out was a guy named Brutus, whose descendant way down the line had a hand in killing Julius Caesar for being such a tyrant. It was in the family line. Well, when they kicked out Tarquinas, Superbus. They decided to come up with a new kind of government. This was changing. A changing government now. Now they were ruled by the Senate by old men. The word Senex means old man. A bunch of old guys. Probably a bunch of old white guys. 
<laughs> Not the old guys made the Roman Senate, but they elected two presidents, call them consuls, for one year at a time. That's how they got rid of kings. They didn't want to have a king. They didn't want anything to do with it. It was a republic now. That was in, what, 510 B.C., 500 years before Jesus. And under the republic, it grew and it grew and it grew and it multiplied until, let's say, 150 years before Jesus, there it was so rich and getting so powerful that, pe that political parties began to grow <coughs> exponentially. Envies, jealousy, I can't tell you how many murders there were. Probably concluding with Julius Caesar shortly thereafter because of the riches that Rome was gaining, conquest. They conquered Carthage down in North Africa, conquered Greece. Actually, they burned down Corinth in Greece the same year they burned down Carthage. That's when the Mediterranean Sea became our sea. Well, Julius Caesar was very popular. With the, with the common people because he gave away a bunch of free stuff. He was the world's first Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> and the people loved him. And so when Brutus and his other senators saw that he was becoming like a king, they didn't like it. So they thought by murdering Caesar, getting rid of him, they would restore the republic and everything would be back to normal. They misread the public sentiment and had to go on the run with a, some legions and war and such as that. And Julius Caesar had adopted his nephew Octavian who became Augustus Caesar and he was elevated. Now his idea and the idea of an emperor at that time, I think this was 27 BC, some modern historians are saying 31, but who cares? They, they elevated him to be first priest, this, the first among equals. His idea of an emperor wasn't what it became. The emperor gained in power as time went on. Augustus Caesar wouldn't have considered ruling without consent of the Senate. It would, it would have made him gag to think about it. But as time went on, the emperors got richer, and absolute power, as the old saying goes, corrupts absolutely. Yeah. And you ended up with some of the most wacky, weird, <clears throat> destructive, arrogant, malicious human beings that the world has ever produced. But you, but you see, the, the genius of Rome was behind every change. And God was behind it all. Using it all. He used the timekeepers. He used the legal minds. He used the arts and the philosophy. And, and he used Rome to prepare the way for the gospel of his son to spread. He used the Greek language to spread the gospel. Because Alexander the Great, the Greek king, wanted a one world people. He wanted a one-world government, one-world currency, one-world language. Greek was spread everywhere and became the language of commerce. So everybody that had any money had to know Greek. Every merchant, every businessman, every politician. Greek became the standard. Everybody knew Greek besides their own natural language. And the Romans absorbed the genius of the Etruscans that they had conquered to start with up in Italy to build incredible roads. Some of them are still around. I've walked on them. They're pretty nice. Cars can still go on them. <coughs> Lasted all these thousands of years. So that the Apostle Paul could go around preaching Greek in every city he went to. Pirates were wiped out of the Mediterranean Sea. One time, the pirates were so bad, one time they captured Julius Caesar as a young man 
and held him for ransom. Got a lot of money that way. Probably while Julius Caesar was playing a poker game or whatever kind of game they played with the pirates while they were waiting, he joked with them and said, you know, I'm going to come back and kill all of you. And they all laughed, but he, he did. <laughs> Probably got his money back. <laughs> but the pirates were wiped out. Paul was not afraid of pirates when he was on the sea. He wasn't afraid of highway robbers when he was on the road because Rome knew how to govern. That was its genius. And the genius, the, the spirit behind Rome saw that a republic was better than a king. But something about this new empire was developing toward what God eventually had in mind, what Satan had in mind, thinking he was pleasing God. Anyway, Jesus is born right after the first emperor is made. Uh, the uh, Emperor Augustus Caesar died in 14 AD, so the second emperor um, was emperor when Jesus was crucified. And he was a nut. But he wasn't as bad a nut as the next nut. <laughs> but he was a nut. He was paranoid to death. It's known as the reign of terror in Rome. <coughs> Where if anybody, if I, if I wanted your house, all I have to do is get a report to him that you've been talking bad about him. And I got your house while you got, he got your head. So everybody was afraid of everybody. He didn't even live in Rome. He moved out on an island so nobody could get close to him. Tiberius. But that was pretty tame compared to what things came later. But... Here are the things that are very important as far as us. What happened to God's people? In the mid-first century, the big event is what I have right there. God's people rejected Paul. That was the big event. Because if you reject the gospel of the Holy Ghost, being in the lead, worshiping in the Spirit, in the truth, what is left? The only thing that's left is ceremony. The only thing that's left is to claim to be serving God, just like all the religions of the earth. There's nothing left if you leave the Holy Ghost but the earth and human thought. Now, believers were hated, even so, because even with the ceremonies they were starting to make up, they still didn't like the idea of worshiping the emperor. And the emperors by that time were worshipped. Deified by the Senate as soon as they died, until some emperors like uh, Caligula decided that was, he didn't want to wait for that. He wanted to be deified now. So he declared himself to be a god. <laughs> but he still had to worship the genius of the emperor. The genius of Rome. And they wouldn't do it. And so they were greatly persecuted, misunderstood and persecuted. Rome honored the religion of the Jews because they were so superstitious, so religious, that they honored all religions that were ancient. And the Jewish religion came a long time before Rome showed up. So they, they excused the Jews from military service because they didn't want to fight on the Sabbath. They, uh, they allowed, they didn't persecute them for not sacrificing to their gods. But believers in Jesus when they departed from, from the Jewish religion, they were newcomers, and new religions were suspect. So, they persecuted them. And they, they, these backslidden children of God that had rejected Paul started sometime in late 1st century, early 2nd century, calling themselves Christians. In the Bible, 
believers were called Christians to make fun of them. They were called Christians by the world. But these believers wanted to be associated with them, so they called themselves Christians. We don't know who the first one was. It's like I found out when I was uh, in the seminary doing research in this part of history. It's like believers went into a tunnel, 75, 88 AD, came out 40, 50, 70 years later, saying, here we are, and the whole world followed them, but it wasn't the same group of people. It, they weren't the same. And, and scholars all over the world will say that. It was a charismatic community when it went in. They know there was a blank spot. And it was a ritualistic, ecclesiastical people when they came out. And nobody knows what happened in that tunnel, that blank spot. But when they came out, they were calling themselves Christians. And the Romans hated them. They would, they would kill them just for being called Christians. If they called themselves Christians and admitted to being Christians, Rome would kill them. Now, philosophers from ancient Greece were known to be, known to speak truth to power. They gloried in that. Some of them were killed too for doing it. But that, that aura that went with Greek philosophy that Rome so admired allowed them to speak to the emperors and protest killing people just for being called a name who hadn't committed any crime. Now, this was a sucker move by Satan because how would you feel if your brothers or your children were having their heads cut off and somebody spoke up for you? You'd like them. So these backslidden children of God started being attracted to philosophy. <coughs> and they started taking that in and depending on the wisdom of man instead of the power of the Spirit. That's a big deal about philosophy. Paul said... Philosophy will corrupt your faith. But the people he talked to didn't believe it. But it happened. So that's a major corruption of the faith. A major development in the second century is when folks like Justin Martyr and some others stood up and protested killing people just because of a name. Well, that was that's the first major major step, or second major step. The third one happened in the second in the, let me see, the third century, I think it was. And that is that God pulled the rug out from under the Roman Empire. The economy collapsed. Aqueducts started going bad. City walls started crumbling and didn't they? And the magistrates there didn't have the money to fix them. It was required if you were in, in many public offices for, out of your own money to uh, offer games and take care of things in the city. Out of your, a lot of people would run away rather than when they were told by the emperor, you're going to be the governor of this city. They'd run because they knew it was going to cost them everything they had. <coughs> or either so heavily tax the people so they'd have the money or misjudge them in a court, <clears throat> fine them, and take that money. It was just a mess. The Roman Empire was crumbling. There was a, I wish I had looked this up before I got here. There was a period, let, let's just say this, this isn't, the numbers aren't right, but in a, like a 25 year period, there were 20 emperors. Kill, they were killed, assassinated. It was just horrible. At one point, the, the Roman soldiers in Jerusalem after they killed that emperor, auctioned off the empire for the highest bidder. A guy named Didius bought it. They got rid of him after that. But he, he was a very rich man, but he paid a lot of money for the empire. Now, when there were no judges 
nobody to fix the aqueducts or the walls, when the poor could not be supplied because the, the transportation system was falling apart from Egypt with all the wheat. Well, the poor looked around and saw believers taking care of each other, mm -hmm. having order, and they started looking to the leaders of believers. Mm -hmm. but the bishop, they were called. So the, in compassion for the people, God's people were sucked into politics. The cities would go to the bishop for judgments about civil matters. They would ask them to help to supply what was needed to fix the walls, to feed the poor. So the bishops really gained in stature in the third century God's people had rejected the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. They had introduced philosophy into their doctrines, and doctrines were being in, uh, just. And they were involved in politics. The stage was set. Yeah. Now, if it had been up to the Senate of Rome. And by the way, the second emblem that I mentioned earlier is SPQR. That started during the Republic. It meant on the authority of the Senate and the people of Rome. That's all over Rome today. Manhole covers, SPQR, that and the she-wolf, famous things. And, and this is a picture, this is a uh, famous uh, pose of Augustus Caesar while I'm talking, thinking about it. He must have liked birds. Every, so many statues of him but pointing to the little birdies in the sky. I don't know what. <laughs> There's one, Mom. Faith does the same thing. Oh, oh. Reminds me of Augustus Caesar. I, I missed it. When did you say that, uh, that Rome started to crumble and economy? In the third century. Third century. Yeah. Okay. This map of Rome and, and the territory that it gained. That's in the second century, which uh, Gibbon, the famous historian of the 18th century, says the happiest time in human history to be alive in that empire. Had philosopher emperors, had everything was just glorious. No wars anywhere. There was a, the Augustus Caesar initiated the Peace of Rome, the Pax Romana, that lasted more or less. Two, three hundred years. It was just, it was just two hundred years anyway. Peaceful and prosperous, and expanding to this extent. Right here. So anyway, we have God's people in the first century. It's in the Bible, rejecting Paul when he's an old man. He said they've all forsaken me. That sets them up to be sucked in by some kind of demon. And it, the demon of philosophy took them in in the next century. After that, politics took them in. Becoming proud of who they were, having authority over people. Pagans looking to them for judgment and help. Food, money, repairs for the civic works. Augustus Caesar began the Pax Romana. Yeah. And then for 200 years it lasted through other emperors after him. Yeah, even okay. the crazy ones. Oh, even the crazy ones. Even the crazy ones. Yeah, it's pretty, it pretty impressive. We've never seen a time like that since. So now, the genius of Rome is still there. The knowledge of how to control people. Like one scholar said, just the raw mastery over men. That's what the genius of Rome knows how to do. Now there was another development. I don't know if I've mentioned this or not. The last one down there. It started six, seven hundred years before Jesus, but it went all the way through to 325 A.D. when it culminated in the doctrine of the Trinity. And that is what most people don't know is that pagans, polytheists, ones that worship the multitude of gods, 
started thinking there's really only one, but it's okay to worship them all if you understand that you, when you worship them all, you're really worshiping the one God. And the one God that, it, that they centered on was the sun. Sun worship was growing like a, on a graph going up like that through history. Caesar Augustus worshipped the sun god. It was in style among the Greek philosophers. They're the ones that first suggested it. And it was growing greater and greater and greater until by the time of Constantine, about 300 A.D., he worshipped the sun god far above any other god. He's only one. And other, other emperors had done the same thing before then, but not to his degree. And he helped... Look, what's the difference between saying, if you worship me, it's okay to worship these other gods, but just understand you're worshiping the one. What's the difference between that and saying, well, you worship in three gods, but there's not really three, there's just one. It, it, it was a time when there was a neutral theology that I told you about. Where when Constantine came, and he continued the pagan rituals after he was converted to Christianity. People think, oh, he became a Christian, then he just cut out. No, he didn't. He even had statues of himself made with sun rays coming out as him as the sun god. And it had the sun god on his coins after he was supposedly converted. After he was converted to that religion. Mm -hmm. But there was a time there when they would praise the emperor in a great speech. Or when the emperor would write things, they would avoid the J word. And just talk about the magnificence of God. It was what one scholar said, a neutral theology. Which is a theology or a way of talking where people on this side should say, yeah, that's right. And people on this side say, yeah, that's right. Where you could say things that everybody could agree on. But you avoided the J word. That might offend these over here. You don't want to live like that. So in 325, Constantine seeing the way the people of the empire saw that these Christians had some organization. The bishop was at the top and everybody listening, everybody did this. And he wanted to use that to unify his messed up kingdom, messed up empire. So he embraced them and brought them in, gathered them together into a great council. They called it a worldwide council, but a lot of bishops didn't come. But in 325 they met in Nicaea to settle several debates. One of the major ones was, what is the right date for Easter? He didn't like there to be any division. He wanted his empire to be united. So they settled that issue. Then, well, is Jesus a separate person from his Father? Many bishops said yes. Of course he is. Others had gotten so much into that philosophy and that pagan monotheism, they said, no, oh, no, no, he's... He was just a manifestation of God. Same as the Spirit. And Constantine approved of that. So Constantine decided on that. And he decided on the right day of Easter as Christians do it now instead of on the day that Jesus observed the Passover. By the way, the word Easter comes from uh, uh, the name of a Greek, I mean, a, a British goddess of spring. Fertility. That's where it comes from. Oystera or something like that. That's where the name comes from. So it was all blending. I can't tell you. I'm, I'm connect, collecting the information, writing it in a book now. All the things in Christianity that are nothing but Roman pagan tradition. It's unspeakable. The abundance of things that are obviously that. Including, including the name of the chief Christian on earth, the Pope. The title, Pontifex Maximus. The chief pontiff. 
That was, that was Caesar's title. He took that. that. That was an official ritual political title in Rome. And eventually the, all the emperors took that title on themselves. And some popes decreed, I am Caesar. Now there was a time in the second century um, no, it was in the, in the fourth century that Christians hadn't gone quite that far yet and one bishop named Ambrose told an emperor to denounce that title and he did. But then they got it back. It was just too Roman. They couldn't do without it. But that is the reality. And that was the change that was the fourth transformation of, the, of Rome into an empire that controls men's souls. So every scholar I've read have said Rome fell. Most of them say in 476 AD when, when some barbarians plundered the city of Rome for the second or third time. What they don't tell you what, in high school and some colleges is that those barbarians were just Christians like the Romans who were mad about not being given enough of the empire. They weren't de trying to destroy the empire. They wanted it and weren't getting promoted the way they wanted to be, so they just took it. So the Roman Empire did not fall. It transformed into a spiritual thing, controlling people better than ever. Christianity is the product of the union of apostate believers and Rome combining to produce something that's invisible but controls men's minds and souls. Scholars say it failed because they can't find it. But Jesus can reveal it. Then you see Rome didn't fall, just changed again. Yeah. Yeah. It changed from a kingdom to a republic to an empire to a what Daniel called it a kingdom, but it is still Rome. It went invisible, but it's still Rome. Mm -hmm. It's the best form yet, most effective form yet. And if you read what I've written on the Iron Kingdom, and you can understand it, you'll see, yeah, I don't believe there's a child of God on this planet that has his spirit that can read that and say, I, I, I want to be a part of that. <laughs> it's impossible. Once, you, once Jesus lets the scales fall off your eyes and you see it, it's like, oh my God. You, want to, you, want, you don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Yeah. You want to stay clean away from that filthy thing. Now John saw it in Revelation. He didn't know what to call it. And that's really a fascinating thing with Daniel. He described in his vision, the vision, he, he saw all four kingdoms as an animal. He described Babylon as an animal, this and that. Persian Empire as an, another kind of animal. Fourth kind, uh, uh, like a lion with four wings or whatever it was. And he said the fourth one. He didn't even know of an animal to describe it by. It was that different. And that's why the scholars say it's gone. And it is, it is different. John saw it in Revelation. He said, I marvel. He didn't know what to call it. But the angel knew what to call it. He called it the mother of harlots. And abominations on the earth. The great whore. Committing fornication with the kings of the earth. And that's exactly what Christianity has done. Ruled over kings, commanded obeisance, and they gave it. Starting with the Roman Emperor Theodosius, who fell down before the Bishop Ambrose in Milan, Italy, and he chewed him out for doing something, according to Roman justice, seemed pretty right. But here we are. Here we are. It is astonishing that God has brought together this many people that can even comprehend some of what I'm talking about. 
What in the world? What for, God? What for? What are we here for? I don't know. I know I know what I see. And the evidence is out there for everybody who wants it. Some scholars will say, like Michael Grant, famous classicist, he said, it is a commonplace. In other words, I don't even have to quote anybody for everybody to know this is right. It's a commonplace that Rome created Christianity. That's, what he, that's the way he said it. Rome didn't ever create anything. But what, he, what he was trying to say is that Rome blended with apostate believers and they produced the religion of Christianity and they called it the Roman Universal Church. Yeah. To let you know that was the only one. Yeah. They call themselves Catholic because most, most people don't know what Catholic means. But to the people who living in the time, they knew what, well, they knew what that word meant. Roman Universal Church and we will cut your head off if you don't bow. Yeah. It's like Mara Nostra, our seed. Don't try to take one inch of it. Roman Universal Church, don't claim to be a part of it. Part of it. Don't claim to be an assembly of God apart from us. That's how it started. That's how it continued. Until some people broke away. Of course, they killed a lot of them, but Martin Luther, midwife to, to Protestant churches. And that's what John saw. The mother of harlots. Because what the Protestants did is they said, that's too much. There are just two sacraments. Baptism in water and communion. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of degree. Right. None of them were as rich as the mother. None of them as powerful as the mother. And some, of their, some of her daughters hated her guts. That still didn't mean they weren't her, their, their daughters. She was the mother of all of them because when they separated, they took her spirit with them. Yeah. 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 What she did. When you come out of Christianity, you're not coming out with the... You haven't come out if you've got the same spirit. That's right. right. This, God's spirit is altogether different from this world. It's different from this world. It has nothing to do with it, and we want nothing to do with it. It, it takes years to clear out all the junk we build up inside in this Christian culture. It's been put in there. I've said it before, watching Bugs Bunny cartoons with the devil in his car on his cartoon with the pitchfork and the horns. That's Christian mythology. That's right. I took it in as a kid. I watched Bugs Bunny all the time. It's just part of the culture. Jesus has to come clear all that out. Yeah. That you yeah. don't know me. No. It's like when he spoke to me cool. in 2001 and, and said, Go ahead and make a mess big enough that I can't fix. Do you know this about me? Though your sins be as scarlet, praise God. Do you really know this about me? Do you really know me this way? It takes a good while for him to get that across to you. Praise, Praise God. God. But He will. Yes. If we want it. He will. Now, do you have any questions? What? Does the, does the split between the Eastern Orthodox and the and Roman Catholic Church, does that figure in any? Oh, absolutely. Any is that late? Uh, about, um, they started having differences in the late 500s, early 600s. The Christians, the Christians in this part of the world spoke Greek, Greek Orthodox. And the Christians in this part of the world, Latin. That's East and that's West. And then they got into a big controversy about 11th century over icons, whether you should have them and worship on them, all of that. For whatever reason, when Daniel saw that vision, when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream and then Daniel saw it, he had two legs. The arms were Medo-Persia and the legs of Rome were east and west. 
in the late late third late third century, Diocletian, the Emperor Diocletian, tried to straighten out the mess that had happened in that disastrous century. So he made two two emperors, and the vice presidents were called Caesars. Two over here, an emperor and a Caesar over here, and an emperor and a Caesar over here, so they could transition power, trying to trying to manage this gigantic empire. Constantine made a new capital. I can't. I don't know whether it's there or here. No, it's these, the top, top one. The top, top one. one. Yeah. <laughs> and called and it was Byzantium. He renamed it as Constantinople. Very humble yeah. man. The name. Of <laughs> the Turks in 1563 or so, they, the Muslims took it over and renamed it Istanbul, and that's what it's called today. <clears throat> But yeah, that, that east and west are the two legs of that image. It's all part of the same yeah. empire. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, all iron. Yeah. The legs were all iron. So yeah, and the le eventually the leader of this Eastern Orthodox got angry with, the, and, and the Pope got angry with him. They excommunicated each other. They both going to hell. <laughs> 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 And they're still officially that way now. <laughs> he's not called a pope, he's called a patriarch. Which is another word for father, which Jesus said, don't do. Don't right. do. The legs were iron? Yeah. What were the feet? Clay? clay? They were iron Six. mostly, but the toes, part iron, part clay. And they represent? Nations at the end of time. Okay. Here is the mystery. And I'm glad you brought that up, because I forgot to say anything about this. According to what God said to Daniel, that empire, the last one, mm -hmm. was going to be here when Jesus got back. Mm, wow. So the question is, where is it? Yeah. According to all the scholars, it's gone. Yeah. According to God, it's still here. Yeah. It's somewhere. Yeah. Right. So where is it? Yeah. God sees it if people don't. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the Roman Universal Church and her daughters. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so many years ago I read a book, I can't remember who, if some woman wrote a book, but she was talking about the end times. And she was saying that when the end times come, that, uh, you know, when the government, you know, when Antichrist and all that comes in. Antichrist has been here 2,000 years. Well, I know. I, you I mean the beast. A, yeah, the beast, I'm sorry. But, but she was saying that they're, they're going, uh, the Catholic, they're going to make the, everybody to say, to tell them that they're going to have to follow the Catholic religion. That's not true. The well, that's beast, what she said. Yeah, I know it, but a lot of people think that. But the beast is going to destroy the whore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah. So that doesn't make any sense. Well, then that wasn't true. Christian prophecy teachers are worthless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never read one that made any sense. But mm -hmm. can you say again when the term Christian was first used, and was that first derogatory? Well, it was, fir it was first. It was just, it was equivalent to jackass. Mm -hmm. That's what it was equivalent to. It was a sarcastic term made up by the people in Antioch, in the Book of Acts, for those who believed in Christ. They called them Christians. It was probably something they laughed about in the evening meal. When. When those backslidden children of God started labeling themselves Christian, nobody knows. It, they were doing it when they, when that, after that empty time ends in the early second century. Don't know when, who was the first one who came up with the idea of calling himself a Christian instead of letting the world do it. Look, there's a very famous graffiti. It's in the uh, Palatine Museum. I've seen, I've seen it in books. I didn't see it in Rome because the Palatine Museum was closed when I was there. But it's a, it's a, a scratchy drawing on a wall of a man hanging on a cross with the head of a jackass. And scribbled underneath in, in Greek is Alexamenus worships his God. So it's obviously talking about Jesus. That's what the word Christian meant to those who first used it. When the king told Paul, you almost persuade me to be a jackass. That's what he was saying. You're so persuasive, I'm almost 
willing to be called one of you guys. And Paul, didn't, and Paul ignored all that and said, I wish you were all together like I am, <laughs> except for these chains. But the Roman Empire is still here. God said so. It's just a matter of where is it. Yo. Who started BC, BC AD? Uh, How did that start? Probably with the Christian calendars naming time from the time Jesus was born. So Rome had to do with that too? Well, Romans did, would never have said, oh yeah, Roman Christians. Yeah. Yeah, they would, they would have come up with that. Okay. If you ever find a piece of pottery that says it was made in 25 B.C. It's <laughs> fake. <laughs> it started hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Maybe with the Gregorian calendar. That's mm. accepted as worldwide timekeeping now? Yeah. Well, the modern thing is, this post-Christian era we're moving into, the modern thing is, instead of saying B.C., you say B.C.E. And instead of A.D., you say C.E. Before the common era and the common era. Yeah. Got to get rid of Christ sometime. Yeah. Yo, nope. anybody else? Vince, oh. pro Vince brought up the, the Eastern Orthodox versus the regular Catholics. I've always wondered, what are Coptic Christians? Oh, they're in Egypt. They go way back. Well, what is their doctrine or philosophy? I don't know. Okay. There are so many varieties of Christians. They probably they probably were uh, pretty Orthodox. Yeah. Just in Egypt. It appeals to the flesh, that's for sure. Well, any, any religion that's ceremonial appeals to the flesh. As soon as God's people backslid and started adding ceremonies, they were in competition with the whole world yeah. for members. And so you had to develop a calendar that they would recognize. That's why they absorbed most of the patron saints or just ancient Greek and Roman gods, Celtic gods, renamed. The people wanted all those gods. Oh, look, you know, you pray to the saints. That's all that is. I'm telling you, when you look into the details and you get to know it, it's as plain as a nose on your face. What happened? Once Jesus opened your, opened your eyes. When I was 40, I didn't know who came first, the Greeks or the Romans. I didn't know this history. I goofed off in school my whole life. Homeschooling my kids, I learned this. And Jesus used it to teach me. That's when I learned it, living on Elderwood Lane, homeschooling. What, what were the four letters you said that stood for S Senate Confirmation? S P Q R. Yes. Very, all you have to do is type in those four letters. It's all over the internet. Okay. Yes. Everybody knows them. Senate and people of Rome. The P, the S, the PQ stands for one word. Okay. Populusco. People of the people. And the Senatus Populusco Romanus. Um, before Constantine kind of took in the Christians, if you want to say it that way, were the uh, believers that backslid, were they still being persecuted for the name Christian? Like A few years, I mean just like <clears throat> 10, 15 years before Constantine was one of the worst persecutions. But it's a strange thing because the Emperor Diocletian, I think his wife was a Christian. She was okay. They had people working in the palace that were Christians, so it was very selective. So true believers with the Holy Ghost that were following Paul's gospel were being persecuted on, alongside backslidden ones. If yeah, they if would they, have all been lumped yeah, together. Okay. But they were they would have been some of the most persecuted. But here, this is something else that's universally recognized: is that the Christians, when they got in power, destroyed records, and.
corrupted old manuscripts to make it look like their religion went way back. That's, that's not an opinion, that's fact. So we don't know what's lost. And the scholars will warn you, you gotta be careful with the evidence that we have because it's, it's hard to tell what's been tampered with and what hasn't, and besides that, we know they destroyed, they destroyed completely the writings of Montanus, of Arius, who taught the Father and the Son were separate people, Montanus, who blasphemed the whole universal church under heaven, destroyed everything about them. If they found a home where people were having a prayer meeting that taught that, the Roman universal church got the house and the people were thrown out in the street if they were left alive. Mm -hmm. So we don't know much about what really was happening. In a way, I think that's designed by God. Because you've got to have the faith of Abraham. Yeah. 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 Whose fathers worshipped other gods on the other side of the Euphrates, but he went after the right one. <laughs> so maybe God is the one that decided that all that evidence would be destroyed so we wouldn't have so much to lean on just Him wow what part of uh, the old beliefs like the polytheistic way of life did the worship of artifacts and like body parts and stuff like that how did that where did that come from because obviously that's part of some church like very you know like how did that get mixed when in? Constantine's mother <coughs> left Italy and went over to see the very spot Jesus died she found the true cross <laughs> And from that time, the fourth century on, Christianity became a religion of death. Making the sign of the cross for everything came into style. Worship of body parts. I mean, there was a black market for all these saint body parts. Probably dug up old drunk Fred and chopped him up and sold him to him. That's how, that's how a great deal of conversion happened up in that part of the world north of there in France. Among the Gauls, their superstition about body parts. Romans refused the law. Dead could not be buried inside the city. Christians brought the dead into the city, into their churches and bury them. Because they wanted to be close to the dead bodies of the saints. For the longest time, the only the only description you can have of Christianity is a religion of death. So, like you were saying with Rome, finding mastering the master or mastering, you know, the, the rule of men. They saw that people in the Gaul area the respected and, and worshipped body parts, so they brought that in and said that was also part of their religion. Yeah, it is superstition. And who knows? Maybe there was somebody with demonic power like Pharaoh's Egyptian magicians. When Aaron turned his rod into snakes, what the, what the snake, what did they do? There was there's some real spiritual power around. We don't see a lot of it now. We're not living in a time like that, but it's coming. Well, you'll see things like that again. Don't be deceived. Jesus said if it was possible, the very elect of God's children would be deceived by those miraculous powers. So we're, you're going to see it. You young people may see a lot more of it than I, I ever have. Don't let that fool you. It's like Jimmy Toll said 40 years ago, if a man comes and commands my house to turn into a snake and it turns into a snake and crawls down the road, I still want to know what he's teaching. Mm -hmm. Paul, when he got to the old man, if you read Timothy, doctrine, 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 the pure doctrine. Honor the elders that labor in doctrine. Give them double honor. Doctrine got real important to Paul when he got older. Mm -hmm. Righteous living and right doctrine. Mm -hmm. So don't be led astray by stuff like that. But yeah, ever since uh, the true cross was discovered, 
and I don't know who defiled it in the put it, making so many splinters of it. It's all over Europe. <laughs> you probably build a condo with that. Big yeah. <laughs> cross. Big cross. Big cross. Big cross. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you learn what Christianity is, it's mind-boggling. It, it can be painted up, it can be sprayed with perfume, but it stinks to God. Yes. You've got to speak in tongues. Without the Spirit of Christ, you're none of these. And it's like what Michelle or somebody said or Leanne said last night, you can have the Holy Ghost. That's not it. That's not the point. That's your ticket. You got to live right. You got to, you got to feel something. You got to have something. Do something. You can't just show up, sit down, do nothing. You owe God more than that. I loved watching Thomas pay his debt last night. Hey, man. My father blew me away when I was a teenager because I was at that mine. Well, you, you know, you got the Holy Ghost. You're, he was preaching in Louisville. He said, there are more of God's people with the Holy Ghost on their way to hell tonight than you could count. Uh, it's more to it than having the Holy yes. Ghost. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Walk in it. Any other questions? Sure does make you think how powerful and strong God kept His people hidden. Yes. Because it's still He had to do it. I mean, right. He wouldn't have survived. Well, He's keeping us hidden. Yes. That's why we're surviving. That's yes. right. That's Spirit of Christianity would put you to death tomorrow if it was in style. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. it would. It hasn't turned nice. No. It's just yeah. not according to the culture at this time in history. Yeah. It's coming back. Yeah. It's frightening, like you said. The only way we'll be revealed is through some of us who back to you. God, our life is hidden with Christ. Yeah. The only way the world can find us to let loose that hatred is for one of you to go to the world and point us out the way some have. That's the only way they found Jesus. Somebody close to him pointed him out and said, follow me, I'll show you where he is. That's how it works, folks. That's why fellowship is so important. Yes, it is. Anything else? When you, um, what? When you were talking about the time of the tunnel, was that the early second century, like right before the end philosophy? of the first century, early second century? Yeah, about the same. One one guy said said it this way. It was about one scholar. He was a very strong Catholic too, Bella. He said it was about the length of a man's life. You know, if he lives his days out, about that long a time. Geographically, you got the apostate believers blending with Rome. How, geographically, how did they get together to do that? How did well, they, they end up together? Well, when, when, when believers rejected Paul, they were already everywhere. They were already scared. Paul okay. wrote to them in Rome, right. yeah. so they were everywhere. So when everybody decided that Paul was wrong, that it wasn't only in the Spirit, then they were all set up. Some like this ceremony better, some that. Oh, that had to be worked out through a couple of centuries before Constantine. And even then, they had some conflict. But uh, it was a gradual process to get it to where, right where it became official. The Roman Universal Assembly. Don't you dare claim to be an assembly without us. Mm -hmm. I so say you can understand that. It's not hard. And in, in Paul's time, we see the believers turning towards Jewish yeah. ceremonies and traditions. Mm -hmm. But after that tunnel, that's that's done away with, right? It's just like there are two mysteries about that tunnel. One is when who was the first guy that started calling himself a Christian? Second, the believers that went into the tunnel had rejected Paul to go back to Moses. 
when they came out of the tunnel, they hated Moses' guts. They had started developing their own rituals. We don't know who did that either, how that came about. But all that happened in, in what I call the tunnel. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen anybody else call it that. They have different names, but that's what I call it. it just, you just, they just go into as a blank spot. Nobody knows what happened. But when they came out, they were no longer Jews, circumcision. They hated all that and hated Jews. Yeah. And they were calling themselves Christians, and we don't know what happened to make that happen. We don't know. Before they went in, they were already in bad shape, though, right? Very bad. Very bad because they had gone backwards. Ceremony, the Jewish law. <clears throat> it's just something that the reason they're apostate is because they were holding on to the Mo to Moses' law and yeah, and, and then all of a sudden in the tunnel, something it just totally happened. changes. Yeah. Now when when uh, the Romans got tired of the Jews rebelling against them and went to it, went there and destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD, that had to play a part in it. Because you couldn't keep the law then. The Jews couldn't keep the law. How are you going to go to Jerusalem when it's not even there? That may have played a part in it, but we just don't know. Well, you you wonder if there's got it through the tunnel and out if, I mean, there had to be some that held on to... I'm sure there was always been. So that Remnant. we could be where we are yeah. today. But one of the great tricks, I don't know if I mentioned this in the meeting, we talked about it yesterday with somebody, one of the great tricks of the Roman Universal Assembly is that they label you. Then everybody's suspicious. Mm -hmm. There was a group that understood the truth about the communion junk and this stuff like that. And one of their pastors probably was named Bogomil. He came from somewhere in this area. So they called them the Bogomils. There was another group in Europe somewhere um, who didn't believe in This was when there was nothing but Catholic. They didn't believe in it. But they must have been speaking in tongues because the label for them was Lollards. There was nobody named Lollard. They were mocking how they talked sometimes. The Bogomils, they say, went around muttering to themselves. So there was so much of that, so many cases of that throughout the history. We've got brothers and sisters that suffered. I want to be worthy to meet them. So uh, talk about Jerusalem being destroyed in 70 AD. Didn't the Jews get together after that and and have a council and decide that they were going to like come up with a new way to do the law, like a spiritual Well, the law. it's called the bot coal. <clears throat> Did that play bot, into... Bot is the, it means daughter and coal means voice. Daughter of the voice echo, in other words. Yeah. And the rabbis decided since we can't keep the law and do sacrifices anymore, just study of the law will work. And that's the echo of the law. And God's satisfied with that. Yeah, so I just wondered if that into starting to have a hatred towards the Moses law. We don't know. We don't All know. that was in the tunnel. Yeah. Could have been. Could have been. Pastor right. John, huh? one more question. <laughs> what you've called the tunnel, other scholars acknowledge that too. They just oh, don't call it the tunnel. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. they all have yeah. seen that period. Okay. Sure. Just absence of information. I think Christians under Constantine and Lake destroyed much of it. Yeah. No, you got a question? Um, was Diocletian, Tiberius, and Nero a worse emperor? Yeah, which one was the worst? What, what's that? He doesn't know which was the worst emperor. Out uh, of uh, Diocletian, Tiberius, and Nero. Diocletian uh, was a great persecutor, but I think Nero was much crazier. Mm -hmm. Diocletian organized the empire, you know, into. He organized the empire into, we call them the United States of America, he called them the United uh, Dioceses of the Empire. Diocese is how Catholicism is yeah. separate. Yeah. Yeah. Titles, everything is in the Catholic Universal Assembly. Yeah. Wait, what year did Paul come onto the scene? No. I don't know, about 40, 
Because I'm just, I mean, they were rejected by 60, so it wasn't very many years. That, no, that now I just throw 65 out there. I, Paul was an aged man, and he said they'd all rejected me. He started out as a young man mm -hmm. in Stephen's murder, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just throwing the date out there. 65. It was, he, didn't, he never mentioned the destruction of Jerusalem. You would have thought that would have been in his letters if it had happened. Yeah. So before 70. Uh. Yeah. How did Rome go about taking over Greece? Because I've always heard Greece had like the strongest army like, by far. Not, Greece, Spartans, not compared to Rome. Uh, Rome just was militarily more, their army was incredible. They defeated Greece in the second century BC. But they recognized, the, 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 the genius of Rome recognized the value of the genius of Greece and absorbed so much of Greece that a lot of Roman intellectuals complained. And there's an old saying, when Rome conquered Greece, Greece conquered Rome. Huh. The admiration of philosophy and the arts. When I went to uh, Italy, I saw, a, I can't tell you how many statues and busts, but if you read the fine print, it says, copy of the original in Athens. So the Romans copied the Greeks to make the human form perfect. But they militarily they didn't have a problem conquering Greece. Alexander the Great conquered Persia and died about 331 BC. 150 years later, Rome had conquered Greece. So after after um, after Alexander the Great, his empire is divided into four parts, and so none of them were ever as powerful as he was. The Ptolemies were the Greeks that ruled over Egypt from there to the time of Jesus. And Cleopatra was a Greek, not an Egyptian. Uh, she was Cleopatra the Seventh, Seven, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that was a Greek name, but they they loved the Egyptian culture and you know went along with it so somewhat. But no parts of Alexander's empire was as strong enough to strong enough to withstand Rome. Rome had the best ancient army by far. Awesome. You ever seen their turtle formation? The phalanx. No, the phalanx was Greek. The turtle was the Romans. Mm -hmm. They had shield, a row of shields in front, and everybody put their shields on top and the shields on the sides and back. You were just a turtle. <laughs> no arrows could get to you. <laughs> I've read that the... Uh, the Roman army's uh, javelins, their pilum, I think is what they called it. They were like, um, the tip of it was like iron or something like that, and then the base of it was lead, and so basically they would throw those, and then it'd stick into the enemy's shields when they blocked, but then it would bend because it was lead, and it wouldn't come out, so the enemy had to drop their shield. This sounds like Rome. And then they'd have their swords, and you know they'd get back at it. <laughs> Romans were incredible builders. They inherited that genius from the Etruscans. So you said Constantine moved his capital to Constantinople, which was Byzantium before that? Yeah. Did Byzant so was Byzantium a part of Rome, or was it its own? Yeah, civilization? that was part of Rome then. Rome had all this. So what was his question? I can't hear what I was saying. What was his question? He was asking about Constantinople. Was it part of Rome before? Constantine named it as the New Rome, New Capital in the East. And yeah, it was. It certainly was. So did, did he have Greek fire before that? Or did Greek fire come after Constantine? Have Greek what? Greek fire. Greek fire. Tell me all about it. Oh, it was like Byzantium used it like five feet long. It was like fire that could burn in water. Oh, oh, oh. Well, they probably knew about that too. I don't know. I've never heard about it. I've never heard of that. Anybody have any idea how they made it? No. Tried to recreate it. Yeah. There's a lot of that ancient stuff that cannot be recreated. People don't know how to do it. They were not dummies. No. They were not dummies. Okay. 
Greek fire. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. You know they did brain surgery, the ancient Greeks did? Oh, wow. They have skulls that have been cut into and have grown back, not completely shut. So they lived through the surgery long enough for their skull to grow back some. Eye surgery? They were not dummies. Anything else? What? Hey. I just want to make sure I have this right. So when the economy collapsed in Rome in the third century. And God's people were in, sucked into politics. Yeah. Is that when pieces of the Mosaic Law and ceremonies was starting to get merged into this the Rome's religion? Mosaic Law was never merged into Rome that I know. Or of. like their ceremonies of water or um, like water baptism and circumcision and Oh that was that was that was all along. That was all the way from even Paul's day. Yeah. It never that baptism thing was there the whole time. But to like get merged into Rome accepting it and kind of making it part of oh the Christian movement. version of it, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's when it was well, kind of merged in. It was Rome didn't merge with it until Constantine. But see what was happening with those ceremonies is that it was being decorated, altered a little bit. It's more and more acceptable to the world. So the apostate believers and their religion was more and more worldly. Rome, meanwhile, was developing in this own path, and they got close enough to say, hey, you look kind of nice. <laughs> and then the other one said, come on, honey brain. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got Christianity. If those of you who read what I wrote recently about baptism, how that developed, all the different kinds of baptism formulas that were being offered, some of them, yeah, that, that's no good. We're going to keep this one. Up until Constantine, in case you haven't read it yet, be, you had to be absolutely naked when you were baptized. Because Jesus was naked on the cross. Constantine himself was baptized naked. That I'm glad that dropped off. <laughs> Probably too many, too many high-ranking officials didn't want their bodies to be seen. <laughs> and yo. Um, in the Iron Kingdom book, you mentioned Justin one and Justin two and yeah. Barnabas one. Where did those writings come from? Well, Justin was a Christian who argued in front of Marcus Aurelius in the middle of the second century for believers. Justin number two was some Christian guy later who went back into the documents about Justin number one and added Christian doctrine in there to try to make Justin number one seem like one of them. Uh. That's why I called him number one and a number one number. It may have been a number six. It may have been a bunch of them that added stuff. Same thing with Barnabas, the epistle that I believe Barnabas might well have written, but some other Barnabas, some other Christian later threw in a bunch of junk. And so you have Barnabas one, number one teaching what Paul taught. Mm -hmm. The next chapter has this completely contrary doctrine. You know it did, the same guy didn't write both. Yeah. So it was it was tampered with later. Uh, Irenaeus or Ignatius, one or the other, have twelve epistles, and four to six of them have been shown to be forgeries from Christians. That was normal, right? Just use the guy's name to write your letter and say, "Look, our forefathers, we all taught this forever." That was standard operating procedure of the Roman Universal Assembly. So you gotta be real careful with the evidence that's there. Who wrote what? Mm -hmm. I know whose name's on it, but who wrote it? Right. Wow. And if you, if you know the truth, you can see a lot of it. 
if you're a good Christian, you can't see any difference at all. When Rome conquered Israel in 70 AD, was that just a power thing? or did, what, It had what? nothing to do with religion whatsoever. Rome allowed everybody to have their own religion, even let them have their own local governments, their own customs, their own habits. They didn't impose anything on the people it conquered. Israel was free to worship, and Rome honored them, not even worshiping the other gods. But they would not, the genius of Rome would not brook rebellion. You're going to pay your taxes. The taxes were paid on time, well, you're doing fine. But when you rebelled against Rome, Rome was brutal. They crucified so many people that they ran out of trees. And they rebelled again 75 years later, 85 years later, under the Emperor Hadrian, who loved Greece so much, he was the first emperor with a beard to look like a philosopher. And he slaughtered so many, and he banished all Jews forever out of this holy land of theirs. They caught a Jew in that land, he was executed. And they were dispersed until 1948. What year was that that he did that? About 140, 135, I don't know, 135, somewhere along there. It, it wasn't reasonable for any group of individuals or any government to think that they could take Rome's army, right? No way. And Rome would let everybody pretty much have their way. Yeah. So when you say that they rebelled and they rebelled 75 years later, other than tax evasion, was there any other way that, that was conceived to be rebellion? Or was they probably that abused some Roman citizens or something like that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't remember any more details other than them refusing to submit to Rome. There wasn't much they required. No, they are very lenient. There was, it was spiritual long before it looked spiritual, wasn't it? it yes. Was so crafty yes. that it was an invisible thing even when it could be seen. Roman genius was perfect for governing. Something for everybody. Whatever you like, just pay us your taxes. And don't fight us. Kill our leaders. Yeah. So the same now, you say, I am not a Christian. They did not like that. Mm -hmm. uh, can't they label you as something. Uh, yeah. I mean, how can you not be a Christian and be of God? Right. That's the same spirit. Satan has deceived the whole world. The Bible says so. How? Not everybody's a Christian. I'll tell you how. Because everybody on earth, whether it's a Muslim, a Jew, Christian, Hindu, everybody thinks. Christianity represents Jesus. Yes. Yes. Everybody thinks that. And it does not. It's slander against us. It hates the real Jesus. If you say you're not a Christian, but you believe in Jesus, you're the mortal enemy of that demon. But God has us in a bubble. Until one of us backslides and gets mad and starts going to the world point. Yeah. And that'll happen in God's time. He's already let us taste it a few times. That's even Christian doctrine. We'll take you as you are, any way that you are. But don't be that. Don't be Don't that. love Jesus and not be Christian. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. No other questions? I was thinking the fact that that it, Israel rebelled against Rome and all and got was scattered to start with all started with a rebellious spirit. Yeah. I mean, Jesus offered to give them that land and protect them and give them houses yeah. and land and their rebelling against Rome was the equivalent of rebelling against God. Yeah. Because God had given Rome control yeah. of this part of the world. It's like uh, Jeremiah when Nebuchadnezzar came against Jerusalem. He was telling him, surrender. God sent them. Your sins have brought this on you, but they wouldn't believe it. And if there was a prophet of God, 
in there telling the Jews to surrender, he was killed by the Jews. You've heard of Masada? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That was at the end of the 70 year destruction, I think. Yeah. yeah. After the temple. After the temple was gone. Last holdout. Yeah. God's people still have that spirit. If they think that uh, something bad's happening to them, they think it's Satan. It's not God. Yeah. They, they never, they never accepted what uh, God has done. And Good or bad for them. And they refused to pray for Joe Biden. <clears throat> That's rebellion. Mm -hmm. God put him in office. God right. Right. He's a foolish man. He's an evil man. So what? Can God not use a foolish and evil man to bring world history to where He wants it so that He can take us on? It won't be the first time. God used Hitler, used Stalin. Why can't He use Joe Biden? I feel sorry for him. He's a feeble old man. He's being used. He's being used too. Yeah. God have mercy on him. Yeah.